Good afternoon guys, it's Jaeger262, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Armored Warfare. Today I wanted to cover some brand new news that just came out on the Griffin Light Tank, which you see before you, and it's one of those vehicles that's really strange. Uh, I first learned about it in 2016, actually when it entered its third phase according to this article, and you can read this all on your own if you want. Um, but... It was started in 2014. It is an American light tank concept created for NATO to compete with the Swedish CV-90 or CRV-90. Anyway, that's not important. The reason I wanted to cover this is because we are getting new light tanks in the game, finally, and we are getting more additions to the Oscar Faraday tech tree. Which, again, finally, it's one of those tech trees that's very small. There's only seven vehicles in it total. And it's the one that starts at Tier 5, and you have to use special missions to unlock it and everything. It's kind of, it was the proto, for nobody that's gone down the line or for new players, it was the proto for Battle Path Reward Vehicles, quite honestly. You had to complete specific missions to unlock reward vehicles, and then you had to progress up those vehicles to get to Tier 8 and Tier 10. Uh, and ever since its implementation, and that test was successful, obviously, because now we have Battle Path vehicles, uh, it hasn't had any changes made to it whatsoever. And so the reason I want to cover this article is not because, oh, we might be getting light tanks and it might be the Griffin. It's to show you this vehicle here, the Griffin Phase 3, which is a 50mm uh, auto cannon. I'm trying... What is, Oh, robotic assistant. It's a robotically assisted 50mm auto cannon two man vehicle. So it's not a true unmanned vehicle, but there's only a crew of two. It has a crew capacity of six, so if it enters the game, it will get that nice crew compartment upgrade. And the reason I bring this up is because despite all the very cool features, one of them being this camouflage pattern here, which is meant to not only dampen heat signature, but also sound, which is why it's physically there, not just paint. These are all really cool things that are going to be brought into Armored Warfare if this vehicle gets selected, because right now they're asking the community, which is why I wanted to make the video on it, to choose between this one here, which has a really nice 120mm cannon, but is a very massive profile, or the 50mm very small one, almost like an XM2000 at Tier 3 is what this is going to be like. And the reason I think it's interesting is that they are making us choose between a light tank or an AFV uh, for this tech tree. And the reason that's incredible to me is because that's the only thing this tech tree has been known for is very fast vehicles. But I don't see why they would make us choose between one or the other. We already have an amazing uh, tier 10 light tank in the form of the KCX-21. I might have got that wrong, but it's the tier 10 light tank for Oscar Faraday. And we already get the amazing Cornet missile system with the AFV at that tier as well. So I thought it would be better to have this vehicle enter the game, but as a light tank. As of now, because of how light tanks operate in the very real world, and they've shifted from their reconnaissance um, objective, which has gone to AFVs, they've become just active response. How do we get a main battle tank's cannon onto a very small vehicle? And that's a light tank. Because of that, we have very few recon-focused auto-loading light tanks in Armored Warfare. In fact, we only have one, which is the Bagreitza Panzer 57 at Tier 5. And so, I think, out of all the things that they could do for Oscar Faraday line, which this is only one of several vehicles, I'm hoping we get some really interesting ones, and I'll get to that in a minute. I think it would be great for the third Tier 10 vehicle to be a combination of both AFVs and light tanks, since that's what the whole tech tree seems to be pushing towards. And I think this would be a really strong candidate as a light tank with this really great AFV turret. It would be situated like a heavy martyr AFV, uh, but give you all the mobility perks and active spotting perks of a light tank. And I think that would be a really unique way to introduce that concept back into Armored Warfare, because I really do think that the Griffin Mark III is probably the last, if not the only, auto-loading light tank in the world. So, they're asking the community to go and talk on the forums, go to their Discord, 
and tell them which one you want. And I'm hoping a lot of players or somebody will see this and agree with me will say that they want the Griffin 3 as a light tank instead of choosing one or the other or even choosing it as alternative turrets or maybe have the Griffin 1 as a tier 9 and this as the tier 10 that would also come off the Sprut TD. But we will see what happens. That's pretty much it for news. Um, tomorrow there will be an update, a micro patch that's going to fix all the experience issues for the T9E, the Warrior, and the Centauro players who have had their experience stricken because of the new skin. They will fix that, and they will also be fixing several bugs throughout the game, some of which I hope will be the Battle Path missions, so watch out for that update. And then last but not least, let me know in the comment section below what kind of Oscar Faraday vehicles you would look forward to or you would want to see. Uh, for me, I would like to see more unique vehicles that are not represented throughout Armored Warfare, which is kind of what it started with, with the Ruakat, the South African AFV. I would like to see the South African artillery piece, the G6 Rhino perhaps enter as an Oscar Faraday vehicle, or some other indigenous South American or African armored vehicles of any kind, including rapid MBTs, like the Argentinian and Brazilian MBTs, which are these weird and completely unique main battle tank designs that come from their own very specific needs. Uh, it's hard to say what we'll get. These are going to be vehicles that are added next season. So after the Moscow calling season, as we've seen it before, this is probably going to be broken up into two six-month seasons. So we probably won't actually see any changes to the Oscar Faraday tech tree until next summer. But it's hard to tell how soon really that'll be. It could be shorter, it could be longer. But I will keep you posted. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.